Epic. <laughs> All right, that's been the long... first sound of the recording. Just so you're excited for that. I was, well, it's it's good you're bringing it back. It's been a long time since things have been epic. Mm-hmm. Although I feel like I don't know. I feel like the epic spirit still lives very strongly in Fortnite. That is a very epic game. Mm, <laughs> there you're right. Let me. Uh, you ready to go live, Lawrence? Did you change your stuff? I did. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, here I go. The internet was working <sighs> five minutes ago, so hope maybe it'll work now. Hold on. <laughs> For the win. I'm trying to remember all the cringy 2015 peak internet culture uh, verbiage. There was a lot, Lawrence, actually. Uh, everything on Attack of the Show was epic. Oof. Yeah. Everything, you guys were ahead of the curve then. Everything back in 2010 was epic. I miss the epic days, man. <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys know what the name was of my first series on... On YouTube, was it e epic win? Epic fail? Close. Mm -hmm. Closer. Um. Man, can I guess it? Uh. Um. Epic awesome sauce. Hmm. Uh. E epic. Not epic. Quite. Epic Kraken. <laughs> Farther. All right. I'll, it's uh, my first series online that really is where I got my start. It was in Left 4 Dead, and I and I named it "Funny Moments of Getting Owned." Oh yeah, that's rad. Wait, hold on. How, it, was it was rad. How come you didn't with an O or a P? Yeah. How, how, co how come you didn't do? It was with an O. How come you didn't do? I thought I, I thought pwned. pwned was pwned. too. No, you should do. It was P W N T. Mm -hmm. P W N T. Mm. Yeah. I subscribed to the Get Owned Club. I thought the Get Pwned Club was just trying to be little different you know they were they were a little too ahead of the curve i put my i'm not i wasn't that crazy okay i i i, I hung up my spurs at the uh at the get owned uh cantina wow well you know what i bet it got you a, a ton of clicks because uh what was it funny moments of getting owned or whatever it was um yeah man i would have clicked the shit out of that i would have been like oh man i want to see y'all get somebody getting owned. oh I want to see someone get known. Yeah, and it worked for many years. And then eventually I was like, this is just kind of a relic of the times. I should probably move on to other things. But um, Did you yeah, they're still, they're still up there. My channel is some of the most viewed stuff, which is fun. Did you call it funny moments of being a nub? Did you call it that? Uh, I don't think, well, first of all, I don't really, I didn't use the NUB iteration oh of my new. Gosh. Because again, oh my the gosh. same club of people that use pwned use nub, <laughs> you know? <laughs> call call it for what it is. It, you're getting owned, and you're a noob. Yeah. All right. I'm not mincing words here with you, Bruce. <laughs> okay. I'm not. I'm not giving you. I'm not letting you off easy. It's it's you're you're getting owned, and you're a noob. Okay. All right. I'm a straight shooter. <laughs> Funny moments of being a cuck. How about that? That would do really well now. Yeah, I would. <laughs> that would. That's the new getting owned is being a cuck. I mean. But the new cuck is being a simp. So oh, you're right. Like cuck, mm. cuck is a little played out now. Lawrence, you're, it's you're, just you're, constantly evolving. You're too far ahead, Lawrence. So like, <laughs> Kraken, ha he, Kraken has to be like five years behind. So that's why it would be cuck. So, oh, a good point. So yeah. like in five years, well, five years, <laughs> cuck had the shortest lifespan out of everything. It was like, yeah, it was I like don't two know, years. six months. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not widely used for like six months. So now everybody's everybody's buzzing about The Last of Us. Uh, I guess everyone's happy now. Well, um, did you guys watch the state of play just now? I, no. So I didn't, and there's a reason. After this uh, stream, I'm going to play The Last of Us for the first time because I've never played the game before. Um, cool. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, Lawrence, tell us about it. I'm I'm curious to see why why are people excited about it? Uh, there, well, there's a number of factors. Um, I mean, the most honest is that it it looks like a pretty good game. Okay. Um, the and and there are people who are just generally fans of Naughty Dog and stuff like that. Second is that, you know, it's a first-party Sony uh, narrative-driven single-player experience. And those have a really good reputation, and there's certainly a lot of money thrown behind them. So I think there's just generally excitement over that. And then, I guess I guess it's those two factors combined, because, like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't want to be a downer or anything, but, like, Last of Us 1 was fine. It wasn't my favorite game, but that's okay. People said it was a masterpiece, uh, Lawrence. How dare you? I know a lot of people. Pr a it was probably their first, first. Yes, probably their very first. It was uh, a story very with a little girl. Game, yeah. yeah, come on, dude, an action hero, but he was he was cool, but then also gentle. Lawrence, he wasn't very gentle. Oh, um, right. he he had vulnerability. So like there were, there, were, <laughs> that's an awesome gift. Uh, there there were things about <laughs> The Last of Us One that were that were pretty great. Um, to me, it's like. <sighs> 
for a TV or movie to be like considered to have good writing, it has to be about here. For a video game to have good writing, it like just <laughs> pretty close. So The Last of Us had like a solid season of Walking Dead's worth of writing in it, um, which is like for video games is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do I do think it's just a question of like. I think it's a question of like different standards. Um, that said, Last of Us Two they actually showed the state of play and they showed gameplay, uh, which oh, is something odd. that hasn't hasn't been shown a lot yeah. <laughs> lately. <laughs> uh, so and it actually looked pretty good. They actually got got into a lot of systems that are new for Last of Us Two, uh, namely they have like more open environments that you can actually explore. Last of Us One technically had them, but it was yeah they were kind of just like arenas, and it was it was oh it was a wide hallway, but it was basically a hallway. Looks like Last of Us 2 is going to have more, like, actually open environments with spontaneous encounters with enemies and infected peoples and things like that. So that's kind of cool. More like, uh, kind of more open environmental rules. Uh, you know, Far Cry, Breath of the Wild style, what have you. Uh, and I hope that pans out. There's a lot of games that try that and end up not really realizing the, uh, the like, play of all those systems. Because that's really hard to do. Mm-hmm. World simulation that's actually important. Um... So yeah, there's that, and then uh, they also showed there's like there's a follower system now, so you can recruit people, and then when you're trying to fight people, they'll help out, which is pretty neat. Um, the story beats look pretty cool, uh, and then they had like a really extended gameplay section at the end that was just you know just a full gameplay chunk. So I think on top of it being like uh, having like the hype of Sony first party and and everyone who has really brand loyalty getting really excited about that, it was also just a really solid game demo. Which we haven't seen a lot of lately, so I think that's leading to a lot of excitement. A thing that I'm curious about, um, uh, and I'll, I'll abstract it a little bit, is when I was watching it, I'm watching Ellie like shove a screwdriver into somebody's neck, and then watching them thrash out on the ground as they're arterially spraying everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, wow, do I not want to look at that right now? And and it's this is by no means Naughty Dog's fault. It's by no like they had no idea that this was going to happen to the world. But the last thing I want is a dour post-apocalypse of just people being savage to each other. <laughs> on a good day, I don't have a lot of tolerance for that anymore. Because I'm just getting burned out on cynical uh, media about the human, the human nature, uh, the human condition. Yeah. But uh, man, Last of Us 2 is, is trying to even double down on like being bleak and dark and horrible. Mm. Uh, which, again, they had no idea that the world would be like it is right now, so it's not their fault, and it certainly looks like a well-crafted game. But, wow, d- it does it not not something that I want to, like, spend a whole lot of time in that world, because I want to I wanna believe that things are nice and good. Well, how, how, many, how many hours was The Last of Us? Was it, like, 10 to 15 or something? Was it short? Or I remember it being around there. Like yeah, I, mean, that's not, I think that's I was more like fifteen to twenty because I really took my time with it. But. I'm going it all in on Last of Us Two. By the way, like I'm excited because it's it's coming out. I'm actually streaming now, so I can play the game. I can sit down and actually stream the game and play it, and find out what all the hype is about. But Lawrence, I'm really glad you're coming around to the. I don't want to experience real life, or I don't want to experience the downer in a video game or a television show or a movie because that's the way I'm generally always. I'm always like, a, I don't want to watch Breaking. I'm like Breaking Bad, obviously one of the be- best television shows ever. But I don't want to watch a fucking television show about a dude who deals drugs and ruins his family and then like dies. Like that's not. This doesn't. I I I, I kind of the more that I watch that stuff, the, the less I take from it. So especially now uh, with what's going on in the world, it's it's tough. I don't, Kraken. I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same reason why. It's been interesting to see kind of if the the bleak dramas of, you know, Netflix and Hulu and wherever else are, like, doing as well as, like, comedies. And, uh, you know, when we were hanging out, like, a week ago, uh, I don't even remember. Time means nothing to me at this point. <laughs> uh, um, when we were hanging out, we talked about, uh, like, uh, reality shows. And, like, that has been a place of solace for many because it's, like so stupid and reminds them of you know a time before any of this stuff mattered and like it was everything is like just fluff um so i kind of feel for because i i usually tend towards like the more dramatic or or like uh dark kind of you know either comedies or or yeah. like dramas of their own site um but Nowadays, it's been definitely a lot harder to get into that, I guess, because it feels like we're living in one. So I totally get why people 
don't want that to be the 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 main thing yeah that, uh, no, I, they're consuming you know it's uh yeah it's I, I saw somebody be like oh but you know like you watched ozark and you watched um game of thrones and stuff like that ozark hasn't fully committed to that yet and i keep waiting for them to like like uh, by the way i'll do the same thing that i did with breaking bad breaking bad i watched like three or four seasons of and i was like man i love this show Th- this could go either way because it could have halfway through the show um and then it went the sad way <laughs> and i was bummed and i was like fuck i don't want to watch it anymore um and game of thrones there were at least some good stuff where like the night king dies it's spoiler and uh like you know like <laughs> <laughs> like it's like the, the lowest key dropping of a spoiler ever <laughs> i mean it's been a year and a half or something it's like come on um but uh you know like that there were some good things that happened obviously daenerys goes crazy but still the show ends on a relatively high note so i was like okay they invent democracy yeah yeah exactly <laughs> I know. what if we try democracy <laughs> oh. oh democracy <laughs> Um, oh, but at least there's, it, I, there was a, I don't want to get into Game of Thrones again. I we're gonna it's gonna get bloody. Uh, oh no no! Just, I'm not, let's stick to our, I'm not saying it was. I'm, I'm not telling it was good or bad. I'm just saying it ends on a more positive note. Um, mm-hmm. And that's why, like, I've been sort of singing the praises of my hero because my hero is like relentlessly positive. Um, so that's why, and, and I love that the most. So that's why I always talk about Friday Night Lights. It's the same deal. Friday Night Lights is like so it's such a positive show, and it's just like amazing role models, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, so yeah, that's that's why I'm like now now Lawrence, I'm sort of afraid of playing The Last of Us because I'm like, ah, uh, is there going to be anything positive in this game? Can I be happy about anything that happens? <laughs> it's um, mm, no. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Well, you know, you're uh, honest. So the the thing is, like, it's a story well told, though, which because uh, because yeah, I I hit the same. I hit the point in Breaking Bad where I realized the entire show was just like they would. In, the only reason they would ever introduce a character that you empathize with is to kill them. And like, mm. I won't spoil anything, but like that happened, and I could feel it coming. I'm like, of course they're not going to give me a break. Yeah. And it basically got to where every character was horrible, and I didn't care about them. And but I d- also didn't want to see bad things happen to them either because I was just sick of seeing bad things happen to everyone. Right. And I remember like finishing an episode and just feeling like garbage, and I was like, why am I watching this? It's, just, it's it's just a weird dedication to completionism, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, so I just I, I just dropped it. Have you seen the most recent season of Ozark, Bruce? Because I, I love have, that, yeah. that show. Yeah, yeah, I have. And I I started watching it again, and when this was all kicking off, and there there was a point at the very end of that season where I was like, just entirely emotionally crushed by that show, and just like everything <laughs> yeah. happening, and I was like, I need anything else. I also tried recently. Uh, Devil Man Crybaby. Oh, yeah. on, on and that's cool. Netflix. That's a, that's a cool show. That, yeah. that has some like I mean they're they're slaying demons, so it's like yeah. Have you finished it though? No, no, I haven't. I haven't. I also wouldn't recommend finishing oh, that. No. I, I I I was uh, yeah. It it left a bad taste in my mouth when I was done, and mm. I was like, man, I wish I hadn't gone on this journey. So I I'm in a desperate need for any other. Uh, any other show <laughs> that doesn't leave me feeling like shit, and it is, uh, it's been tough going out there. All right, and The Good Place, uh, oh, yeah, is a thoroughly uplifting show that also, uh, uh Crike and I, I think I've identified you as a modern intellectual. I think you might appreciate, <laughs> uh, I think you might Excuse appreciate me. I'm a oh. postmodern, oh, postmodern intellectual, whatever that means, right? Post-modern. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, uh, postmodern intellectual. I Thank think you'll you. appreciate the, uh, the way that they actually do work in philosophical discussion and and uh, attacking various aspects of morality into the narrative itself. And it's also really funny and well-written and generally uplifting. Very cool. Uh, Very yeah, cool. Bruce, last, uh, sorry, uh, going back to the last yeah, of us. Yeah. There, there are parts of it that are that are like pretty well-written, unexpected, but true to the characters. That's always the thing that, that I really like is when Characters do things that do like spur on drama or create interesting or, or dire consequences, but it's true to their characters and their motivations and their feelings. Um, so yeah, I don't know anything about Last of Us Two. Um, I, I like I saw a brief rundown of the spoilers, but you know what? It doesn't. I only did that so, so somebody else wouldn't do it before me, and, and I'm still looking forward to playing the game, sort of, but I'm also kind of not. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'll I'll give it a, a shot, but man, the first. The first couple of times, they're just like, yeah, people are really awful, aren't they? Doesn't it feel good to stab them in the neck with a screwdriver? I'm just like, 
It doesn't, though. I don't want this. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm all in for, like, the Doom Eternal style where, like, you're killing the most evil beings in the fucking world <laughs> and, like, got, like, in the fucking universe and you're like, hell yeah, like, destroying them. And so I'm I'm fine if, if the game gives me reasons to not like the people that I'm killing. Uh, and then I'm like, hell, hell yeah, like, let's get them. But... But if it's like all in the gray and it's like, well, but we shouldn't have killed that one guy because he like tried to help me earlier. And I'd be like, fuck it. You know, like, <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, I know. That's what life is. Life is gray. Yes, that's correct. Uh, yeah. If that's the case, definitely do not finish Devil May Cry Baby. Bruce. Oh, no. Tell you now. Stay away. Watch the first half and then be like, that was fun. I, and then stop. I had actually no intention of finishing it because I was like, I watched it okay. and I was like, eh, it was cool. Yeah, I usually don't love gore either, so I don't know why, for some reason, I stuck with that show, which is literally those things combined. But hey. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Crack, if you fell off my hero, you need to you need to get back on, man. That's, uh, that's I fell off very soon because of the tears, which is funny because then I watched Devil May Cry Baby, which also has tears. What? But, that's, it's in the name. Uh, you know, yeah, you know. I guess. Also, neither has the other one. Do you guys watch, uh, guys watch Demon Slayer? No. Um, mm-hmm. Watch Demon Slayer. It's on Netflix, and uh, it's what I'm talking about, where it's like. You know, their, their main protagonist is basically incorruptible. That's why I love Batman. Because <laughs> the, the Dark Knight and, Dark, well, obviously not the Bat, not Ben Affleck's Batman, but Christian Bale's Batman is basically incorruptible, and that's what I love about him. Um, and that's, hmm. that's why I like those those characters, is because uh, it's he's, you know, even though he's obviously super dark and that those movies have a very gritty tone to them, um, they, uh, they still... He is the point of light, even though it, it doesn't feel like it. So that's why I like it. But well, I'm still gonna play The Last of Us. <laughs> I'm still gonna do it. Okay. And play both games because people have told me over and over and over that's one of the best video games ever of all time, and I'm gonna do it. Well, I'm gonna watch it. I mean, it's play worth playing. It. <laughs> uh, the the interesting thing is you, you kind of mentioned the the dichotomy of the nature of the villain or whatever. The weird thing is, Last of Us does have the sort of like. Or basically, as the zombie archetype of, of like they're not humans anymore, but they're enemies. It has that, but then it also has you know, extremely sentient humans being as vicious and horrible as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. So it's weird because it's got both. Um, I didn't really mind the survival horrors aspect of it, where you're fighting the the infected mushroom peoples. Um, that was pretty cool, and it's it's a pretty functional and entertaining survival horror at that at that level, but. Yeah, man, it's uh, yeah. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious to know how you feel about it. Uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't. I, I really didn't think that I would like uh, God of War, but I loved. Mm. I loved it. I was a huge fan of uh, God of War. I, I just I don't know what it was. Talking about 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2016's God of War, and I, I didn't think. I you know I, I assumed it was going to be like The Last of Us, where you're basically playing through a movie, and it wasn't at all. Um, it just and and the story was so engaging, and there were so many fun little twists and turns, and I just didn't expect the game to go where it did, and so I I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. So I, hopefully I'll I'll do the same with Last of Us. God of War is it's, it's a little more uh, profound and uplifting than The Last of Us. Mm, yeah. Because um, yeah. I love the God of I, I love God of War the reboot too, um, because it not only does it add tons of context about Kratos' character. But it recontextualizes his violence and his personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so much more interesting when you're, he's employing those things to defend his family, instead of doing those things to avenge his family. Right. Especially when, with the first trilogy, it goes well past the point of of reasonable vengeance, and then he's he's just screamy man who tears people in half. <laughs> um, but yeah, God of War's vision of Kratos was incredible. Like to me, that's superlative writing. That's that's writing mm-hmm. that. Not only it makes the game good, but also makes the previous games better and recontextualizes everything about the characters. Uh, perhaps Last of Us Two could do that. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Also, it doesn't doesn't hurt that in God of War, you are again fighting gods, but they're Norse gods, and Norse gods are horrible. Uh, just just by the the lore of it. I mean, so were Greek gods too. Uh, Huh. But it seems yeah. almost like all the gods of the ancient <laughs> yeah. years were awful. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. they were human. They had yeah. they had human passions, human jealousy, uh, which which actually has some amusing crossovers to like the way that DC and Marvel relatively handle their superheroes because those mm-hmm. are gods, you know. Oh yeah, just uh, like uh, uh, the boys. Is that what it's called? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. The, the Amazon show. 
Yeah, I really like that show. I really enjoyed that. It's a good. Sh- it was a. It was a good show, and, and much like we were talking about earlier, there is less gray in that show because, like, literally every superhero was bad, and they all mm-hmm. were like the mm-hmm. worst people I'd ever met, except for what yeah. basically one of them. Um, yeah. And uh, so it made it really easy to be like, I fucking hate these dudes, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's still, yeah, you're right. It was still a really good show. Man, I couldn't stand the boys. I, yeah, I know Lawrence didn't like it. Yeah. Really? Everything about it drips edgy 14 year old. It does. Everything. It totally does. Maybe at my heart, I still am that. And so that's why it spoke to me so well. <laughs> I, I mean, I think, I think I can, I can see where you're coming from. There definitely was a lot of moments that you're like, all right, but it, it was, can't be enough that, I don't know. I, I kind of gave it a pass on a lot of that. And some of the twists I thought were genuinely good. Um, yeah, and I just I just like the world. I don't know. I, I liked I liked taking the because I was never like a huge big into the superhero stuff, which is why I wasn't I didn't really take much of a part in the conversation last week about the Justice League, um, but uh, I know like the the cult fandom taken to the nth degree and given Marvel ultimate power or the Disney core forever you want to relate them to, is I think a really. Uh, almost realistic dystopian future. So I, I liked that they took an attempt at portraying that, um, even though you could argue that, I mean, the, the show was made by Amazon, which is the other oh, yeah. <laughs> evil corporation that might own the world. So uh, who knows? I mean, I'm sure you can poke holes in that kind of comparison all day, but um, it was at least a fun thought experiment. I, I understood Lawrence's point, because def- it definitely, like, like I said before, it made it very clear that every single person in the show was bad, but the people that were fighting the superheroes were good. I like that because it's a television show, but I can totally see how you were saying it's like super edgy. It's like one wants a blowjob, then the other guy's like killing people, and like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I, I I tend to think that real life will fall in the middle, but I'm not watching that for real life. So, yeah, I guess I guess to me, I there was no character whose motivation clicked with me. Yeah, because. Yeah. They, uh, Carl Urban's character, like, is intentionally vague and mysterious, and that's that's the clever fourteen year old mm. gimmick for him. Mm-hmm. Is that oh, he says he does something different every time. It's fun, right? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to try to not be condescending when I'm talking about the show. <laughs> I'll try my best. And then the main character, who has probably the most bland and overused motivation, is that they killed his hot girlfriend. Um, then, like his his routine, and and Craig and I, I know that you've complained about this with my hero, but. Every single fucking episode, he's like, oh, gosh, I don't know if I can do this. And then Carl Urban slaps him on the back. <laughs> you, 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 he does he cut one. off for you, too? I, yeah, I only heard yeah. just oh. the exclamations. I only heard the, the, oh, okay. like the, the, the whiny middle parts. It was like, what? Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Uh, uh, Discord did a favor, then, uh, and enhanced my... Per- I mean, my I think area. it still got your point across pretty It did. It, to- it totally did. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah, I just I saw too many episodes of that was the arc of his entire episode multiple times is that he he expressed uh, a lack of action and inability to do anything. Um, circumstances did a lot of work to put him in a position where he just had to like hit a button. He would hit it, um, have this epiphany, and then the next episode roll all the way back to, oh, gosh, I don't know if I can do this again. Um, and what is like extra frustrating about it is that he's the voice of reason for the one hero who's supposed to be pure. Like, he's supposed to be her moral anchor or whatever. But she's not. And he's not either. So it's... it's it's I don't know. They, they set up all these characters to mean these things. But the setup actually invalidates the character. For me, at least. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so you have, you have a main... You have a protagonist who doesn't express volition. And I guess is supposed to... Uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't finished it because I got I got tired of it. Uh, sorry, I was just just noticing chat. So it, it, it's possible that all these things get addressed. I don't know that I could could stop rolling my eyes long enough to get through it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Garth Ennis I think is the the yeah the writer and that's also the dude who did Wanted. I'm pretty sure, which is also very 14 year old edge lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh so yeah, Wanted's it, Wanted's. I mean, it's okay. I maybe we. Have I love different... the movie, but uh, the comic oh, okay. is is disgusting. I never read the comic. I thought the movie it's, was hilarious. Um, yeah, which is why it's cool. It. But but it's like again, so out of this out of out of this world, ridiculous that I was like, oh, it's fine, you know. Yeah. The the movie took a lot of the worst parts of Wanted out. Oh, did it? And, oh, okay. Oh yeah, one of was Mark Millar, another like Edge Lord writer. I'm sorry, you're right about Mark that. Mark Millar is what Kickass, um, Kickass, or uh, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Kick-Ass is another comic that I desperately wanted to like that also somehow invalidated its own premise. Man, even the movie! The thing that, the thing that makes my brain melt, and, and I'm going on wild tangents here, so <laughs> this will be the last thing I'll say and then I'll shut up for a while. For a movie that's trying to be a realistic depiction of superheroes, why does it end with a machine gun jetpack? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't... Is there like some fourth dimensional commentary there that I don't get? Or is that just they didn't know how to end the movie and then they became <laughs> the very thing they were mocking the whole time? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Well, you know, I don't take remember somebody, movie. Somebody I, speak. I do actually because I really liked it. Um, but I guess unlike Lawrence, I never thought it was supposed to be a realistic fiction. To me, it was like uh, when I watched at the very beginning of the movie feels like when you're 13 and you you wish that you're a superhero so like what you imagine yourself doing is going and like hitting somebody and mm -hmm. they like go flying back and that's what happens in kick ass yeah. once he trains a little bit <laughs> like he trains a little bit and all of a sudden he's able to like knock people back and the people that are using guns like nicholas cage and his daughter are like the most accurate you know like this girl's an unbelievable shot making unbelievable shots and it's obviously not real but i understand what lawrence is saying is like there's not the, the premise to me wasn't ever oh this is totally real and like you, this could be that's what that's what they were trying to look like it was but it actually wasn't it was the same with watchmen watchmen did the same thing in the movie watchmen was hmm. a, a, that by the way watchmen is the, basically comic about real people becoming superheroes but again in the movie when they're fighting and also in the comic they're punching and kicking dudes and they're going flying back into walls and like breaking cement so it's like i kind of Halfway through, I was like, okay, I'm just suspending disbelief. Like, this doesn't feel realistic to me because it's not, it's not realistic. There's a Dr. Manhattan, you know, like, so I was like, whatever. And that was the same with Kick-Ass where, like, there's a jetpack, machine gun. I was like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> you know, like, whatever. Um, so that, that said, though, it's not like Kick-Ass is like, I go back and watch Kick-Ass every six months and go, yeah! You know, like, I, I watched it, enjoyed it, and moved on. <laughs> so that's, what it, that's what it all it was to me. But I, I see what you're saying, Lawrence. I'm trying yeah. not to talk. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, Lawrence, I, I'd be curious to hear what you think of the end of uh, the boys because I, I, I understand all the criticism you've you've uh, shared. I think the end of it has introduces like a lot of really interesting. I don't know. I I, I like the way they ended the the season. Um, I do agree with that. The issue of that character that's like. Oh, I'm uh, I'm the bad guy, and like I'm not gonna tell you about my past. I'm just you know. Oh my god! Yeah, dude. What was he just a man what explode? Was he do what was he doing? Is he just he like dumping a bucket of lighter fluid into a? Oh, I don't know. Uh -huh. He's like, it's not warm enough yet. And just like throws, <laughs> just exploded a bucket of gasoline into the pit and blows himself away. Sorry, but he's he seems okay. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, no, I I mean I was I interrupted myself. I don't know. I can finish the thought with that. Um, I don't know. I it ends in like a really weird place, and I just appreciate that this like big budget, big attention show is like going a really weird angle, and is using like mainstream superheroes to kind of tell that story. So that's why I, I I generally kind of like things that are trying something new or going in a weird direction. And although I agree, it, it kind of starts off very. Uh, not new. What is the word? I don't know. I just woke up. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it starts off being uh, uh, what's the word? It's it's uh, tropey. It's rote. It's uh, like yeah, it's the same. It. It's the same shit that you've seen over and over. Um, yeah. I I liked. I just liked the fact that they were like, um, you know, oh well, they're killing real people, and and this is something that uh, Justice League actually, <laughs> ironically, um, and Batman versus Superman, sort of uh, acknowledge. Is that like when they acknowledge the the civilian casualties of Man of Steel, um, and it's the same with the Avengers. They did the same thing where they acknowledge the civilian casualties of like a battle for New York and like that these superheroes are causing mm. problems. So I was like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. It's like I've seen it before. I'm curious to see how this how this show uh, takes it. But also, I have noticed that recently in the last year to year and a half, when someone says, "Hey, it's good. This thing is good. You should go watch this show or this movie or this game." I then watch all of it because I don't want anybody mm -hmm. to ever tell me, hey, you only watch half of it. You should watch the rest of it because mm. uh, so I watch 
every single fucking episode, no matter how bad or good it is, because I'm like... Except for Devilman, except for De- which you did stop. Well, by the way, Devilman, I discovered on my own. Nobody told me to watch it, so... Um, ah. But, like, you know... I've, well, I'm telling you not to watch it, so... I was, I'm going to stay away what, now. What is that going to do? I'm going to stay away. <laughs> um, but that's what I... I that's, those are the things I've been doing, like, for anime, because anime is the same way. It's the same, same with video games. We're like, well, once you're 40 hours into the video game, it's great. Well, that's not a good video game, yeah. guys. It's just not. It's, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same deal with anime. It's like, well, seventy-five episodes in, it's great. No, dude, bro, that's not a show. That's not a good television show. That's not. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I've been punishing myself, and the boys, I ended up kind of enjoying. I was like, oh, this is cool, um, but I didn't go to talk to anybody else and say you gotta go watch the boys or anything. I'm just kind of like, man, it's cool. <laughs> same with like, I watched Carnival Row on Amazon. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I watch guys. It's, it's fine. Um, uh, the Expanse. I watched the Expanse. Expanse. A lot, a lot of a lot of people like the Expanse. I watched all of it. Thought it was pretty good. Eh, you know, take it or leave it. <laughs> Whatever you want. Um, so yeah, but I, Good Omens was good. I really liked Good Omens. I didn't. <laughs> I watched really. I watched, really? I watched all of Good Omens and thought it was really uh, much like Lawrence. I thought it was really uh, tropey and kind of like predictable. And, and I was just like. It was a it was a slog for me to get through, but I watched it all. Hmm. I did it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I, I don't know. It's a. I, I find Lawrence's um, willingness to just stop pretty amazing because I can't do it at all. I never. I don't know why I can't, but I can't. I can only do it with with TV, mostly because I. It has to do with like I don't know. I'm I'm reading way too much into stuff, but with like creative intent. Once, oh, yeah. <laughs> gentleman just true. fell onto a coffee cup. He almost what is it, Mister Hands himself? No, what? What's the, no, what's the, what's the dude who shoves a jar into his ass and then it breaks? Is it one man, one jar? What? One man, one jar, or something like that? Okay, all right, let's not go there. Thanks, Sorry, was guys. That a, was that a spoiler, Kraken? <laughs> <laughs> Did you only see the first five seconds of that clip and you didn't watch it all the way through? No, I don't want to think of a Mister Jar on this kid throwing fucking paper into a into a mug. I'm pretty sure okay? it's one man, one jar. I'm not saying Google it. All right, thanks. I, Let's... It seems like it. It seems like it is. Yeah, and I wouldn't say Googling it either. Yeah, don't do it. Um. Well, I got distracted. It's okay. Uh. Uh. That that brings up an interesting question, though. Can you guys think of any example where toughing it out was actually paid off? Like when you got to the end, there was a turn or a moment or a beat that actually mm. made all the slow stuff ramping up to it matter. Game of um, Thrones. <laughs> um. I, Mr. Was a joke. Mr. Robot. Uh, Mr. Robot has. Ah. has oh yes. Mr. Robot That's has a has a just a painfully slow season, um, and I was like, but if you took season two out of Mr. Robot entirely, would that change how the series paid off, or would it just make you get to the good part faster? Well, you'd have more background on the characters that they elaborated on in uh, in season two. So if you didn't have that background, you mm. may not be as attached to the characters. I guess. Um, I'm I'm just guessing, by the way, because I didn't watch it that way. Uh, but for me, Mr. Robot. I thought for sure was dead in the water. I thought that was it. I was like, well, mm-hmm. okay, never going back to that. And mm-hmm. I was like, I went and watched a couple episodes of season three. I was like, damn it. I was like, they somehow got me back in. But the, I, that's the only example I can think of offhand. I don't, I can't, I can't think of anything else where I was like, watched all of it. and was like, well, holy shit. Those other 45 episodes that I watched, well, I was totally worth it. Like, I don't know that that's the case. I'm... For, this is this is pretty pretty recent, but for some reason Red Dead Redemption Two comes to mind. Oh, there's it's very slow. Um, there's a lot of character moments that seem pretty pretty banal, and and it's like, well, why are you making me like do all this stuff? But I feel like once you reach the end and the way that the end recontextualizes all the interactions you've had and the character moments you've had, and certainly like the arc of Arthur Morgan as a character across the whole game, the pacing actually did really matter by the end of it and it doesn't there's no way to know that when you're just playing it at the beginning you're like why does it take mm. so long to ride this horse somewhere uh, or why does it take so long to like skin a skin a deer or whatever it's funny you say that Lawrence, um, because i played it twice and stopped halfway through twice i, I wow. that's rough can't finish it sorry go ahead go ahead oh i, t- I totally get it um it's 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 one of the few games to me where like and, and it had, like, the real pacing of a book. Uh, I guess Game of Thrones, uh, or sorry, Song of Ice and Fire references may be appropriate here, even though it's not done. So it's hard to say if it was worth a journey by the end. But, yeah, Red Dead 2 for sure. Uh, I get why you might fall off in the middle. 
because that's when it's kind of hard to tell where it's going and what's going on. And like, there's, I, re- I remember in the middle of the game, there, uh, there are stakes, but it's kind of hard to know exactly how they're ramping up and things like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's funny to see chat because there's a lot of like very diametrically opposed viewpoints right next to each other in chat. Like, Red Dead 2 is so good, right next to RD, RDR2 is painful. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel like it's uh, it's definitely one where you have to kind of accept its rhythm instead of dictating your own, which is something that I kind of run into when it comes to, like, serialized serialized entertainment like TV. Uh, it's, it's just like, it's, at some point I get the vibe that the creators aren't driving anywhere anymore. They're just filling episodes. Um, and that can be fine. Like, I grew up reared on like star trek's next next generation and while it did kind of have a con a con- continuous plot line through the whole series it was more like there were tons of monster of the week episodes and each but each one had an arc and focused on a character and told a cool story but boy are there a lot of tv shows that don't do that like instead of just doing an episodic tale with a self-contained story they try to lean into this continuing narrative but they don't have enough story to tell so it just ends up being a lot of like buying time um, I remember this, like, 24 was the first time when I was like, wait a minute, this is bad. Because um, I was on my, like, f- I was, I, I didn't even get out of season one in that show, which maybe that's another example of something that got good eventually. But for me, I just, I remember watching an episode where, you know, they had six simultaneous plot lines going. All they would do is rotate through them, uh, go back to girl in a van, and she looks worried, and the van driver says something, and she looks even more scared, and you just bought five minutes of screen time without doing anything. And then click back to this other guy, and then he does a thing. Maybe he like taps on a computer. He sees an email. All right, we're done with him for now. Let's let. So it's it's the soap opera kind of format of using a bunch of a bunch of uh, a bunch of storylines to buy time that's not really going anywhere or saying anything. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of the thing that I definitely start to reach for the you know the turn off button you, when that starts happening you must really hate television then because that's what that's basically all television is there there are so few television shows that every episode matters it's like that's very very rare uh well mattering can mean different things like i mean like as long as there's something of value to each individual episode but i do feel like a lot of the times that that gets lost because people have a season to fill and they just have to buy time, and then, and like, you know, the Game of Thrones format. Only things happen in the last two episodes, and it's only then to get you excited for the next season. So it gets renewed so the producers can make more stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of don't like TV for that reason. You're exactly right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so hard to find. I mean, like, that's that's why I was, like, like Watchmen's a great example of a television show, but it's only one season. Uh, but every episode matters, and it's great television all the way through. Um, same with Westworld's only season one, <laughs> season two and three are, yeah. are bad. I'm, I'm really interested by the shows that, uh, are limited, you know, release. Like they, they signed up to tell like a one season story or two season story or three season story. And they're like, all right, this is where we are. We're not going to like constantly be trying to lead the producers on or like, you know, to get another installment of money from the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, Studio. Yeah. Um, sorry, w- words are hard for me today. <laughs> uh, but so that's actually why I signed up to watch. I'm sorry, I'm still on Devil Man, but it really left a lasting effect <laughs> on me. But it, it it was like limited release. It's one season. You know, it's a full story. So I'm like, all right, great. I'm in. Like, it's like crazy combat devils. And then when it ends, I'm like, oh, I get what, now why it's one season. Okay, I guess I just didn't like the vision of the creator, and now I'm sad, and like everything sucks. Mm. Um, so I guess that's good because it like it's enriching, you know. You it's good to see different perspectives and to like further hone in on what type of content you like. But um, and it's a lot easier to do that when it's like a one season thing than when it's say I don't know five seasons and oh just wait by season four it comes back and it like it finds itself again because then you're like chasing this high that you haven't gotten since season one. Um, yeah, that's not a good television show. It's just not. Yeah. It, I mean, like, and that's the bringing this back to games too. I, I, it's been very hard to like. Red Dead's a really great example, actually, because people just rave and rave about Red Dead, and the the game I know is a masterpiece. I know it's beautiful. It plays really interestingly. It's it's amazing what you can do in the video game. But like the story for me has never hooked me. Um, two times in, and I just can't do it. It was the same with GTA, by the way. GTA was like 
I liked the story, but like 10 hours in, I was like, I don't, what? I just, and I'm like, I kind of forget about it and I move on to something else. And I know that I'm missing out on it, but I just can't do it. And the, uh, for me, the, the games that have always kept me hooked were like, um, what's it called? Uh, Half-Life Alex. Half-Life Alex to me felt paced correctly. Like it was like just as soon as things were getting a little the uh, repetitive and they're like, okay, I get it. Like with the same gun, I have to do the same thing. They'd change it and they'd be like, okay, now do this thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh shit. And then it was this really cool mechanic that I I had to learn, but it felt really good at the same time. It was the same with you know Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 1. Those were both paced very, very well. Generally, Valve has been pretty good at that, like with Portal and stuff like that. Those are very, very well paced video games in terms of story. So that's what I'm worried about with Last of Us is that like, you know, eight hours in, am I going to be like, oof, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you know? mm. So I know, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, Valve, Valve are masters at, at pacing. The, the way you move through Half-Life 1, 2 and, and Alex, the way you move through environments, you'll go from like closed in subway stations to wide plazas to weird alien hotels. And, you, and like the, the thread through it all is, is immaculate. And how they constantly are, are making you feel like you're in a new place doing a new thing. Um, Last of Us has that as well. The pacing is a little more blunt, I would say. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't be reviewing it for you. You're about to play it, but no, it's fine. I don't care. Yeah, there, there, are, like, there are some big story beats that will kind of disrupt the flow and put you in a new place doing a new thing. But in my memory, they're pretty abrupt and kind of jarring. Um, but that's just my memory, uh, cause man, I can only, I can only imagine how impossible it must be to pace, pace a video game, pace something interactive where you don't get to choose the timing that things happen. Yeah. You just have to sort of create environments and sort of nudge the player along at, at the right time. I feel like Red Dead kind of struggled with that too. Um, to some degree you can control the, the pace of it by just choosing to do story missions or doing, and like, just, I don't know, going and exploring and stuff like that. But even still, if you just played it through for the story, it's still very, very slow. Um, yeah, Last of Us feels like it probably should have been as slow as Red Dead, which makes some of the some of the moments in it feel pretty abrupt and and violent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, saying that in, in every sense of the word. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'm super interested to, to see how you how you come away with it or come away from it, Bruce. It's been it's been really good for me to to play these games on stream because then I feel like I'm like I have a little bit of a duty to finish them. So like Subnautica was the same way. Subnautica I finished. Oh, you did. How was that? I, oh, it, that I is like it. I loved it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Uh, oh, I won't spoil anything. No, I I loved. Uh, I just loved the game because it was the same thing that it had the same thing that Half Life uh, did, but it was slower. Mm. So it took longer. It took mm -hmm. like thirty hours. Um, hmm. But and it's more self-driven than it is. You know, yeah, system. it's more. It is more self-driven, which actually, generally, when it comes to narrative, I don't like. I would rather be mm -hmm. rushed through the narrative uh, and given time to think about it while, like, away from the video game, rather than like, you know, sitting there like crafting things over and over and over, trying to figure out what the story's about. Regardless, Subnautica was was amazing, and I'm really glad I was able to play all the way through it. Um, it's something that I feel like people should do, but it is a thirty-hour journey. Um, mm -hmm. it's a very, very long journey. Uh, and so like, that's kind of what I say about like, um, I'm trying to think of a television show, like, uh, Friday Night Lights and, and Mr. Robot are both require hours and hours and hours of your time. But it, I feel like the time will be worth it once you're all the way through it. Yeah. So. I, I, there are very few games that have left me feeling as enriched and like, yeah, personally accomplished yeah. as yeah. Subnautica did when I, when I finished it, I. I like had to sit back and like had like a really, you know, it was a top like ten moments in in gaming all around. Yeah, it's uh, it was great and uh, cracking. You're exactly right. I felt like I had done something, even though mm -hmm. when I really thought about it, I was like, oh, everybody else has done this too. <laughs> you know, I was like, ah, whatever. No, I didn't really accomplish anything. Um, but the game makes you feel like it, and then it, when it ends, I immediately wanted more. I was like, oh, well, wait, hold on. Mm, what about yeah. this other thing? And then what about this other thing? Well, what you know, like it kind of left me hanging. I was I was asking a bunch of questions, and that's that's usually the sign of good good content. So, um, yeah, Lawrence, you should give it a try. Did you ever get into it at all? Not yet. No, I really want to. Every, everything everyone said about it feels like exactly my kind of game. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Just haven't found the time, I guess. Even though technically I have nothing but time. Oh, that hasn't been true the previous week. Uh, 
I've, I've been ha- I've had some projects that have been fun to work on. Um, but the way you talk about Subnautica reminds me a lot of what is it? Outer Wilds, not Outer Worlds. Mm, okay. Have you guys played that? I never did. Yes. No, I never did. That's oh, my God. my other. Oh my God! The ending of that game. Speak back to the original topic of endings that stick the landing. The mm. ending of that game justifies everything in that game. It was cool. It that was up there in Subnautica levels. Actually, Bruce, I really recommend you play that game. That's a lot of people have, and I probably will at some point, just because so many people have said, "Oh my gosh, you got to try it." Um, I only played a little bit of it, like an hour or something, for a Funhouse video, but uh, but I never really continued it just because it, it didn't catch me right off. But but I feel mm-hmm. like I should probably give it the time. So it's it definitely what you're describing as you like a more hands-on story that kind of shows you what it's about. This is the opposite of that. This is like the most hands-off story that I think I've ever seen in a video game, even like more so than Dark Souls, which was already like oh, wow. you know you have to discover everything yourself. Um, it's basically like Mist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? If it's... you ever tried to seriously play Mist, there's a there's a whole narrative to Mist, but yeah, you you have to find it organically in the world, and mm-hmm. it's like there are things placed in spots that their placement there is significant and makes sense, but they'll never tell you that, and there won't be a text log. I mean, there are some text logs in Outer Outer Wilds, but yeah, it's mostly like you just have to be thinking about the things you know and mm-hmm. how they connect to the things you see, mm-hmm. and it tells a whole story. Uh, behind behind what happened before you got there. Um, mm-hmm. That's cool. So yeah, it's cool, but it's also there's like there are like brain expanding moments in that game where mm-hmm. things click and and the ending is like the most galaxy brain. Yeah, um, it, because God, it's amazing. It really is. It it totally flips on its head. I think the the preconceptions of like what it means to. Uh, to to beat a game <laughs> like really? it, wow. which is I've I can't think of any other game that's done that for me where I've been like, wow, this I I'm left feeling feelings that I have never felt when beating a game before. Do that um, like Pablo Escobar hands behind your back staring out a window kind of kind of moment. <laughs> yeah, definitely definitely one of those. I I definitely got pretty emotional. I think in like the final cutscene. Um, oh man, yeah, I I can't recommend it enough. But also, it's not for everyone. It's definitely one of those games where if you don't like being left to your own devices or, or putting together pieces to a puzzle and, and feeling lost, then it might be rough. Oh, uh, yeah. But huh. well, then I'm, if you can maybe, power through, it's worth it. Shit, maybe I, you guys are getting me hyped for it. So that's uh, mm. that sounds exciting. Like once I get through Last of Us and Minecraft Dungeons and a few other newer newer games, I need another series to start because Bandalore doesn't work anymore. <laughs> So <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. No, what happened? No, it just crashes over and over and over. It's uh oh no. They've been they've been patching it and it's just it which is which is totally fine. I was I like I enjoyed the 75 hours I played of that game. It was mm-hmm. man, I loved it. Um but uh but yeah, I need I need something new to play and I'm I'm excited about all the uh the story-based games coming soon like Cyberpunk and oh man, I just can't wait. I just can't wait. The Nubo got you, man. The Nubo's crashing all your games, Bruce. What? Who? <laughs> Nothing. It's it's a dumb joke. <laughs> Everyone was blaming Denuvo for like I like losing frames in Doom or something like that. What the hell? So no, Denuvo is. What's Denuvo? Oh my gosh. Uh, so way back in the day, Denuvo was DRM software. It was to like validate discs, and it ran like at the firmware level to vet, like it used the angle of the laser on the CD to to j- like figure out whether or not your your disc was legitimate. Everyone hated it because everyone hated DRM. And also people blamed it for performance and stuff like that. So then, this is, boy, this is a rabbit hole I didn't intend to go down. Um, <laughs> it's software added Denuvo Anti-Cheat, which is not DRM, but it's an anti-cheat engine. They added it to Doom Eternal because Lord knows we're all playing battle mode all day. And those battle mode cheaters are a real, a real problem. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they did that because they're trying to invest in the multiplayer aspect of the, of the service. They want to make sure that it's running well. Um, but it did prevent the game from running on some systems and also... Everyone suddenly is getting really antsy about uh, anti-cheat? software that runs. Well, just yeah, just yeah, anti-cheat in general, and the the level of access it has to your system. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of people read half a Reddit post and, and now get very upset about it. Yep. So uh, that that was a whole thing. Whatever. They're gonna take it out in the next update. So Whoa. I was just saying, you you uh, Denuvo's crashing your game now. I mean, you, what you should so. what you should say is the, what is it? Is the Riot Vanguard? Because now Riot Vanguard yes. runs in your tray. 
See, and you can exit out of it, and it'll oh. and it'll say because like it's actually good. Before Vanguard, you couldn't see, and that's interesting. They changed it so now that the anti cheat for Valorant basically runs every time you start your computer. It doesn't matter if you start Valorant, and uh, it's there and it's just hanging out, but it's in your tray, and you can exit out of it and be like, I don't want you to oh. run. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, but it, I assume it has to be running for you to play Valorant. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that seems reasonable. It, I I totally think it is, but uh, a lot of people didn't when uh, that whole thing came out about how, you know, it was running like you said down at the uh, the firmware driver level. I think even maybe ring zero, Bruce. Yeah, it was way down. It's bad. Way way rings. Down. There are rings, and I know that zero is a is the lowest one <laughs> because Reddit said it. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be so dismissive, <laughs> but I am. I I whatever. Maybe I should just embrace it. Um. But I have I have a question. Sorry if if any of you guys had like uh, the media or video game topics banked up and you were waiting on a pause. Not at all. Because I'm I was gonna swerve a little bit. I don't know about Kraken. Um. Huh? Okay. Uh, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> good sign. Good sign. Yeah. All right. I heard um, De Nuvo and I cheat and Valorant and I tuned out because <laughs> none of those made, made a impact on me. Not playing those modern video games with all these nah, modern dude. problems? No, Kraken's mo- he's a, modding I'm Oblivion. I'm a post-modern gamer. He's a- I saw you playing Mortal Kombat last night. Yeah, How do you feel about that storyline? And it was oh. fun. I really liked it. Hell yeah. um, that, that game, when playing it, it just feels like a movie night with your fans. And then you're like hard-gated by a fight that's too hard. <laughs> and then when you beat it, we just go back to the movie, which is really nice. Yep. Yeah. The most melodrama. And then like... I love Mortal Kombat uh, story modes for all the reasons they invent to just flood what you're staring at with a bunch of goons so that the like named cast can just like punch and flip a little bit. <laughs> oh, it's so great. <laughs> also, uh, just to let you guys know, big, big deal in Aftermath now. Not only do we have... Oh, gosh. So not only do we have like a, a storyline reboot that happened in Eleven, basically... What are we talking uh, about? But now Final we have t- time travel again. No, Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh okay. All right. We have time travel. Wait, was this what you were going to talk also, about? Hold on. Was this what you were going to talk about? No, it's not. Uh, no, it's not. Right. Uh, this is actually not exactly what I was going to talk about. But yeah, just just so you guys know where we're at in Mortal Kombat verse in the canon, uh, we have <laughs> we have time travel. <laughs> we have uh, we had a mechanic where uh, good characters would turn evil. They turn into revenants, which made their skin a little purple. Uh, so they so now. Uh, there are two versions of each character in each timeline that also interact with each other and themselves in various cutscenes. So, also Robocop. Uh, so, Mortal Kombat's the coolest. <laughs> also Robocop. Very much the it's, coolest. It's, it's pretty nuts. They, like, this, the, uh, the new DLC is basically just, like, Avengers Endgame. Like, they, it starts off and they're like, oh man, we fucked everything up. Guess we gotta go back in time and get the thing that fucked this up so that we could just yeah. unfuck it for now. Yeah. And everyone's like... Okay, well, we're gonna need some help. <laughs> they, like <laughs> rally everyone. It was fun though, it was a lot including of fun. Robocop. Yeah. Robo, I kept waiting for him to make an appearance. He's just one of those like characters that you know you can fight as, right, but doesn't right. show up in the story. Oh, good. But I was like, every time that there is like a, a new portal and someone like walks out, I'm like, Robocop, <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> um, Lawrence, what were you gonna ask? Right, the the non video game thing. Yeah. So I know that it's rare. I know that it's rare in a podcast to not only discuss media consumption, but I, I want to try a little experiment. Please. Uh, what have we all done in the last week that has nothing to do with ingesting TV, video games, music, or whatever? Uh, and let's talk about that for a little bit. You bet. If that's possible. Um, I can start if, if no one else has anything going on. But Yeah, go ahead, Lawrence. Okay, sure. Uh, oh, crap. What have I been doing? Um, so, <laughs> uh, um, there... Steph and I have teamed up for a little project here. We're basically converting our backyard into like uh, a sort of resort, if you will. So uh, I, I was hanging up rope, rope lights and uh, doing some other yard maintenance stuff. Um, and I do find that like, I do find that just handiwork in general is pretty fun. It's, uh, it's cool to just like walk into a space, see what tools you have, and then figure out how to bridge the gap from what you need to do to actually doing it and trying to make it look good. So uh, I was just, I was hauling around ladders, I was drilling holes, I was screwing in hooks, I was hanging lights. Uh, they're solar too, so it's 2020, That's it's awesome. pretty sick. Yeah. yeah, you put out a little solar thingy, and then they charge in the day, and then there's a sensor in the solar pad that makes them turn on at night. That's so cool. So I don't have to plug anything in, I don't gotta do any switches. Uh, brief, uh, brief concern though, 
there's like this security light in the backyard that has a sensor that keeps turning on. So I had to just hang a rag over the sensor because after tracking cords for like 20 minutes, I couldn't find, I think it's just hardwired on all the time. And there was no like off switch on the sensor itself. So do you have possums living weird, in, your, uh, in your backyard? Is that why? Yes. And, uh, that's kind of a problem. Um, because I don't know. Steph is not a fan of, of animals that scurry. That's her, that's her definition. If it scurries, she hates it. And it turns out uh, possums sure do scurry. Yeah, they or, do. Or excuse me, opossums. Because possums are cute. Opossums are not. Uh, and one is okay and the other one is not. What? We also have raccoons. They're very fat and I love them. <laughs> um, I don't know how... There are some animals that like know how to be cute. It's just in their DNA. Ferrets are just cute when they play. They're just adorable as hell. Uh, raccoons, too, somehow, are just cute. Um, so possums we have, like, not, a backyard cute. Oh, possums. No, they're not. They're absolutely possums not. Possums are frightening, but I, for some reason, find them cute. But their their face and teeth and the way they move are, are just disgusting. So gross. Mm-hmm. I think they're adorable, but I, I get why people think they're gross. <laughs> This kid has a trick cup. Sorry, we're, we're watching a, oh, yeah. a video of a kid scooping up dice. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe this kid has actually got, got the heat. Maybe he's actually got the juice. But Miami uh, Heat. Yeah, exactly. That's good. <laughs> he's wearing a Miami Heat shirt and stacking these dice. He's pretty good at it. I think, it. He's, I think he's just really good at it. He's more talented than I am at anything. How dare you. <laughs> um, apart from that, gosh. Uh, mostly cleaning up stuff. I know there was some, a couple of other things I was working on. I can't remember. Um, I don't know. How about you guys? What have you been up to? Aside from, uh, have you been passing the time and maintaining sanity? Not is the answer. You want me to answer first, Craig? And I can. No, I said not, not maintaining sanity. Oh. Everything's gone downhill. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I pinched my nerve like oh. recently and it's been really bad. It's like, it's, it's, I've realized that I need to like have just more range of motion at this station mm. because mm-hmm. I don't know if it was like just too much of like turning the small rotation of my head but whatever it is like it's i've i've recommitted to starting to work out and stretch more so well, i was gonna say is it still pitched? that's gonna be the next thing uh it's better now than it was when when we saw each other but um so now you yeah, now you can now you can start stretching because like yeah because now basically like there are stretches you can do in your chair that will help you out a lot because this ha- mm-hmm. this happened to me for a long time and my mom is a like she's a fitness director and has been for years she was like oh you just gotta start stretching and she was right that's that's all it is it's just basically like doing stretches in your chair or getting up and doing a little yoga or pilates or something like that will sort of warm you up a little bit and then you could sit in the chair for a little a little little while longer and not feel like you're gonna pinch a nerve and really fuck yourself up yeah so well appreciate that yeah i i'm slowly getting better um i don't know i i've i've definitely oh actually I have one nice thing that is not immediately uh, digital in nature. Um, my uh, my so my sister. I don't really talk about my sister much on online because I pref- like like keep my personal life private. Yeah. But um, uh, she you know has lived in London for a little while and has a bunch of friends out there and they do like you know a re- weekly Zoom call or whatever to uh, do like pub quiz nights um, and they recently. Have been getting a little bored with that and they're all fans of like the show community and a few other things um and so my sister which i was shocked by actually suggested that they start uh trying D and um i was i mean they've never been that type to be into that sort of stuff but we ended up uh she called me up and was like can you teach me how this works i might dm for my friends um and so now i'm like putting together a little starter pack to help teach my sister how this works and then maybe do like a one-off session with um, with uh, with my sister's friends, um, and hopefully get them all hooked. That sounds awesome. Yeah, the 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 silver lining to all this is that both like my parents and my sister are starting to like see the value of video games and role playing because they have literally nothing else to do. So <laughs> they're like, I guess we'll try the thing that he does, and then now they're like slowly starting to get it, and I'm like, you know, bringing everyone into my uh, into my fold. My, uh, you know, <laughs> your, video, my digital your video game cult is what it is. Yes. So my description of what I'm doing that's not digital related is getting my family members who are not digital related into digital things. So I don't know if that's a good answer, but that's that is <laughs> no, what that's it is. Great. 
Um, <coughs> uh, I suggest the Cry Crew for your uh, your followers. Oh yeah, uh, C R I Crew. The cr- mm-hmm. not C R Y because the Cry Crew sounds like they're sad. It sounds like, like they cry. Crying. They cry yeah. all the time. But but Lawrence maybe they're just really good at role playing. Lawrence was trying to do a play on Kraken. So the Cry Crew at CryCon. The, uh, yeah, there's there's it's difficult because so Cryotic and myself have been doing this for almost the same amount of time. We're like friends and we hang out, you know, every once in a while. But like, whenever we're trying to brand something, like people confuse us all the time. It's very difficult to do Cry anything because it's either him or it's me. So CryCon has to legally be distinct from if Cryotic ever starts his own convention as well. So we have to. We have to find that fine line. Maybe we have any lawyer friends that can that can chime in. That's oh, a, I saw that post. It sounds, I love that one. Wait, which one is it? This one? The uh, another one right above. Oh, Keem? Are you talking about Keemstar? No, no, no. The the Celeste. This one, yeah? Huh? Scroll down. This one. Yes. Yeah. Celeste. Yeah. yeah. S- staring at the... <laughs> um, it's adorable. Well, uh, you know what you need to do is you need to buy that URL... Basically, you need to start a competition with Cryotic. I actually don't know who this person is. I've never, I've never heard of them. You never met Cry? No, I never did. I never did. Um, huh. So uh, I guess then you need. We were to... in the Maker Studio stuff, and you were doing uh-huh. with Machinima at the time. Okay, no, makes sense. No, you need to be the winner. Is what I'm saying. You need to go out and oh. buy the URLs, uh, patent CryCon or whatever the fuck you're going to call it, the one that's quarantine safe, and mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, and start it so that you could put Cryotic out of business. Right? Right, Kraken? Uh, Say yes. I, mean, I guess internet beef does sell, so... <laughs> I'll, I'll have to ask him if we can start an internet beef around our name, which is just, I guess, 10 years too late? I mean, yeah, that's, we've both been doing this for a long it's time. Way, it's way too we late. We just now noticed. Yeah, it's way too late. Um, so yesterday, I took a day off in 10 weeks. Uh, it was my first day off in 10 weeks. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and I drove to Santa Barbara and then a little further into Central California. And I had dinner on at a table at a restaurant outside. Oh, it was unbelievable. Wow. It was it was the most unbelievable thing. I never thought that I would be in a point in my life where sitting outside with a mask around my neck because you you would basically if if you interacted with the server at all you both had to have masks on which is totally fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was able to sit outside and have dinner, eat my food at a table. And uh, uh, it was just a really nice night. It was just a really nice night when I was eating, when I was eating dinner at a restaurant, and I felt I felt fantastic because in Los Angeles they don't have that here, and they probably won't for a little bit. <laughs> so, um, so that was great. And then uh, the next day, I uh, we, we went on a hike. We wandered around uh, this like uh, little preserve that was near my friend's house, and I asked uh, my friend Dan if there were any ticks, and he looked back at me and said yes, and kept walking. And then, oh. uh, and then I was like, oh, uh-oh. So I'm pretty sure there are no, I don't have any ticks. I feel like I'd have a tick, or I'd be able to tell if I had a tick in my leg, right? Generally? You would see yeah. it, or, yeah. Or, or like, I mean, or, you should just run your hands around and see if you feel a little bump. Okay, good. All right, just want to make sure, because I, I have a little, I have a little spot. It's not, it's not a bump, it's more of a scab. I just want to make sure um, that I don't have a tick in there. I hope I don't have a tick in there. Oh uh, yeah, text text toaster in chat is correct. You'd be dead if you had a tick. You'd dead? Be, yeah, you'd be dead. So you you look fine to me. You look alive. So I'm gonna say that no. <laughs> uh, one tick is usually enough to drop a grown man. Yeah, they suck uh, a lot of blood. Oh yeah, all the blood. Yeah. <laughs> like vampires. So, them, yeah. Really? Is that true? I don't think any of you it's are doctors true. here. I don't think any of you know that. Well, but. there's many ways to be a doctor, Bruce. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you could be a doctor of. Like um, what is it? Uh, hi- like a chiropractor, which is not a real doctor. Mm. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, hold on. Oh, speaking of chiropractic, um, Kraken, I was going to recommend to you. I bought a uh, I bought like a pummel gun, basically like one of those oh, guns yeah. that just you like beats the shit like, out of you. Yeah. Because I like uh, like about twenty years of very bad posture, and then like also another ten years of just working out wrong really messed up the musculature in my back and it wasn't until uh it wasn't until i had like stunt training and pro wrestling training that it kind of hit a point where i was like something's not right here yeah mostly that there was just there was pain that just wasn't healing right um so i did i did physical therapy and right away they're like god you gotta you gotta change how you're holding yourself 
And then, yeah, part of that is, it's actually pretty pretty interesting. I don't know, the human body is just a tangle of, of very survival-driven decisions. But once muscles get, like, angry, they lock up. Like, they mm-hmm. knot up like an actual knot. And you actually just have to beat the shit out of it to make yeah. it relax and to make, make, like, blood flow through it and carry nourishment and, and uh, lactic acid and stuff away from it so it actually heals. So... I, I don't know. Yeah, we're we're sitting all day. It's easy to get that gamer hunch going on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely planning to start a war with my body pretty soon. Um, oh, I'm excited! <laughs> so, I'm really excited to trade yeah. notes with you about that because I well, let's exchange weapons too. I I I want to I want to know uh, what's the best use for each of the different parts because they're not getting off easy. Okay, um, good. Yes, speaking your of which, body is uh, your enemy. The uh, the a my AC went out this morning and oh. instead I woke up to instead it blowing cold air just blowing hot air so it's like over eighty degrees in my apartment right now and I got to run real quick to go wait a minute hold see on if I can hold on a second do let, me, let me ask you this question about, about the situation it it was instead blowing hot why didn't it just turn off it it was sent to auto and to cool I checked it was set to sixty eight degrees and it was seventy eight oh. Um, oh and it was just blowing heat and so now I'm actually dying that sounds so like I, my i'm gonna nightmare. get some water and see if i can get i don't know i, I need to do something open though, your windows Craig, open right your now. windows i have i've opened all of the windows um, and it's just getting worse so i'm gonna maybe just turn it off all right i'll be right back <laughs> um so so like living in los angeles generally if you're like we're i'm in an area where it's not too bad usually so like i just have a bunch of fans so if it gets hot i just turn on a bunch of fans um because number one it saves energy number two it's probably better for the environment um, and number three, it's cheaper. <laughs> so uh, that's usually what I do. I don't know, Lawrence, how how you handled the heat because I don't think it gets pretty hot where you are, right? No, I'm a, I'm a little closer to the coast. Uh, you know, it can get it can get up to like 90, low 90s here, um, which is pretty toasty when you have no you know air conditioning. But yeah, tons of fans. Stephanie actually got a like industrial fan that's like supposed to be for a warehouse yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had to I had to mount it to one of the windows, like actually drill it into the wood um and then the the instructions also had this whole thing where they were like do not ever run this fan without other windows open because it will burn out the motor it'll like basically create a a weird uh, air pressure vortex in a higher low because it has intake and exhaust settings so so yeah i uh that's that's a really good way to kind of just pull cool air through the house uh this house is weird man it's it's kind of a frankenstein house you know it's it's california so it's pretty easy to see where the decades went by of people building extensions onto it and onto it. Yep. Um, the the weirdest part is that the room I'm in right now was probably never meant to be a room. It seemed like it was supposed to be a patio or a sunroom or something because there's zero insulation in the roof. Huh. Um, yeah, it's it's weird. So it, it can get pretty hot and pretty cold in here. Um, and there's not a lot of tools to like really deal with that aside from trying to suck fresh air through the house. So... Yeah, that's kind of how it is for me. I have I have a little desk fan that's just trained right on me, and then uh, a massive droning uh, industrial fan that I can turn on. It does feel pretty cool, I gotta admit, because like the the dial's really heavy, so it goes chong, and then the, the like motor starts kicking up. Like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Those industrial fans are awesome. <laughs> Those are rad. This this girl ate it <laughs> into that couch. Yeah. She, <laughs> God bless drunk people. Just ate it. Um. I, uh, much like you, I am in a a space that should, was, I think, originally outside and now is inside. And everyone's always wondering where, like, so many people have always been like, hey, Bruce, why are you in a hallway? And it's basically a hallway. It's like a tiny little balcony hallway thing. And it's funny, uh, listening to people talk from Los Angeles because, like, we're all in, like, makeshift spots that had to be, uh, converted to different things because. (laughs) Everyone's been building on top of building on top of building with L.A. And it's uh, nothing is like, oh, I live in a four bedroom house with a giant backyard. It's like, no, not here. So not, <laughs> never here. Never here. But hey, yeah. yeah, that doesn't really exist. It's been it's been an interesting uh, process because I'm still sort of settling into getting a nice workflow just in this corner of this room. But this this kind of went from. Yeah, being a place that I play video games into being a place that I work out of, and it's been an interesting process in like space management. Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like everybody's sort of going through that now because people are working from home, yeah. and you have to convert some space to a workspace. Um, I wonder. Like, I feel like organizers and shelves have to be selling pretty well. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Like home desks and stuff. I uh, I was curious to see in in people's uh, like in the chat right now, like. 
how many people have converted to work from home? Like how many people now are working from home whereas before they weren't? Um, if, uh, if you just say if you're working from home, just say yes. Uh, and if you're not, just say no. I, I'm just, just, just wondering because I know a lot of people did it, but I, I wasn't sure how many people. There you go. Um, there's a lot of yeses. Yeah, that's like, because I, some people in my chat have been like, I'm an essential worker, so like I still have to go to work, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of people have converted to work from home. And I'm just, I'm, I wonder what the, the, uh, the percentages of people that are now working from home. Um, oh, yeah, the SUP. Quality meme. Yep, that's a really good, it is a really good meme. Um, got to sweep up after Peanut Boy. Yeah, a lot of people that said yes. Um, and I, yeah, shocking amount. I wish I could talk to, like, I wish I could talk individually to chat and ask them how they're feeling about it. Because um, I think a lot of people, it's, it's like when you were a kid and you're like, man, I wish I never had to go to school. And then they don't have to go to school now. And I actually talked to a few kids and they were like, Ah, kind of sucks. Like, I wish I could see my friends. And I know that that's the way I would feel when I was a kid. If I, this is, I don't know if this has ever happened before. I don't think, I, I can't think of a time that, that kids were just out of school. Everybody was out of school for an extra three or four months. I, I don't know if that's ever existed. Um, so it's just a, it's just a really weird time. There's a lot of, a lot of people going through a lot of psychological differences now. Yeah, everybody's going to be homeschooled now. It's, Everyone's going to be that weird kid. Yeah, it's uh, it's so strange. It's such a strange, uh, such a strange time. I don't, uh, I don't know how to say it other than that. <laughs> you know, like I don't know how to say we're all going through something, and everyone's kind of like th those are big changes for everybody, um, and it's a total uh, total sea change. So. Yeah, I saw, what was it? Uh, was it Facebook? They basically said, like, yeah, we're just going to keep working from home after all this is, is wrapped up. Yep. And it's it's hard for me to imagine. It's hard for me to imagine a whole, like, that, that's got to happen with a lot of companies, right? I mean, they probably not, aren't going to make announcements about it. But uh, I feel like if we're going to spend, oh God, if we're going to spend so long figuring out how to make everything work under these new guidelines, it's going to be a lot of work to even switch it back like once something's a temporary solution it stays permanent until there's a reason to change that's it that's right yeah. so yeah. not only is this a weird time but my god the ripple effects are going to be weird and interesting yeah i, I, I wonder oh, go ahead. i was just like kitsune in my chat says my mother's a teacher and currently our our county schools are hugely in debt currently they may not open up at all this year and i have i've heard the same thing uh here in california that there's uh, like people are just be like that nah, you know what uh fuck it 2021 and that blows my mind that just blows my mind yeah so yes I, uh, I wonder hopefully that doesn't like put a serious wrinkle in just general education like, yeah. there's going to be a whole generation that just has a road bump in their their education process I don't know is the is the debt because there's less tax revenue coming in or is that just like is it in debt the way that all schools are underfunded in America I don't know I, I, I don't know hmm. I don't either and like you know to Katsune and everybody else, everyone else has their own specific situation and their own variation on it. It's just, uh, it's just wild. It's, um, j like the best thing about the human race is that usually when these things happen, uh, really good stuff comes out of it. Obviously there's bad stuff too, but like there's some really, there'll be some really interesting innovation and there'll, there'll be some, um, really cool stuff that, that pops out of this and we'll be like, Oh wow. Like, you know, how do we ever live without that? So we're not there yet. We're kind of in the middle of it. So it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like that. Um, but I think eventually it will. I think at some point, you know, we'll be, we'll be on the other side of it. So. I think so. I, if anything, it, it depends on how long this lasts. But yeah, it, it creates opportunity for new solutions, which I'm, I'm genuinely not saying this to like bite off a larger topic, but that's what capitalism is supposed to be really good at. It's true. Is if, yeah. if there's a market demand and somebody can fill that demand, then they're established, they get elevated, and that's how the system should work. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for like communal teaching tools, better teleconferencing experiences, uh, hardware that makes teleconferencing more easy, um, smoother. I mean, man, who knows? And it, yeah, we may just figure out that like maintaining a physical building for education wasn't worth it all along. Um, I know that there's, there's just so much infrastructure built there, but who knows? Maybe you can slip on some VR glasses in five years and go to school that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's a, 
in, in, in as many ways as this is horrible and it's causing so much negativity to people, there is a window through which we accelerate to the, you know, 2150 version of our world uh, by just by necessity uh, where, yeah, we're all connected digitally instead of physically. I and, and Bruce, I know that you have have been hit pretty hard by losing that physical connection. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 going to be interesting to see how the human experience copes with that yeah especially if society does move into a digital platform yeah it'll be it's uh, probably like most things it'll end up being a sort of a hybrid of the two mm. um i think we'll we'll probably get more more digital connections than we ever have before um but then they'll probably be like some, some interesting really uh you know like close physical connections that people have or like that you know like our different um experiences like not escape rooms is the wrong thing, but like other other sorts of experiences that are like actual close physical connections with other human beings, they'll probably be both. Um, after this whole thing is over, because generally humans are are social beings and they usually need to be around other humans. That's usually the way societies work. So, um, yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. It's uh, it's it's stupid. It's stupid to say, and I and I hate it. I hate it when people would say it to me when when I when I was going through something tough. But people would always say everything happens for a reason. I choose to believe that everything happens for a reason. <laughs> so, um, so there's a reason. There'll be many reasons for this, but it is really hard to see the forest for the trees right now. You know, that's that's tough. So, I don't know. Yeah, I guess the most constructive outcome is that while there have been outbreaks of this nature, uh, you know, H1N1. Uh, wait, no, that's a video game. Um, no, you got it. H1N1. Uh, oh, that's that's a real thing. Okay, you're, you're thinking of H1Z1. That's it. Yeah. Um, boy, oof. My, my brain is too addled at the moment. <laughs> uh, I mean, it typically going through hardship just makes you more prepared for the next time if you respond to it properly. That's right, yeah. Um, the moments in my life when I've experienced loss have... Because, you know, it's, it, it doesn't happen automatically. I think, I think negative experiences can damage you as a person. It's not... That, that whole axiom of, like, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger is... Uh, <laughs> Can be true, but not always. But it requires, yeah. yeah, it requires it requires effort on an individual's part, and in, in this case, on society's part, yeah. to bend these bad things into a constructive outcome. And if we all, as individuals, and together in in our society, uh, Joker and all that, uh, <laughs> can manage to do that, then yes, it did happen for a reason, and it was a good one. Um, but yeah, I hope I hope that happens. Uh, I I have seen. Because I've been desperate to to see positive things, I've seen a lot of wonderful things of people at an individual level doing great things yeah. and uh, maintaining connections and, and maintaining warmth. It's it's interesting though because as a as a teenager, I kind of did this to myself. <laughs> I just stayed inside and played video games all the time. And you know, my parents, when they weren't in the middle of getting divorced, uh, at least my dad would be like, "Hey, you should go outside and talk to people." I was like, "Ah, I don't need that." Um, and now I have enough distance from that to realize that it did sort of stunt me in a way that just being around people made me mellow out about people. But if you just sit in your bedroom and think about people, you come to some weird conclusions. Uh, at least I do. I should I should be more personal about it and not not preachy. But uh, I yeah that that is what concerns me is like for all the ways that we can get around the logistics of quarantine, the actual lack of person to person interaction can maybe drive people into some weird and extreme ideas about the human experience. Yeah. Oh. We were, uh, Kraken, just so you, we're catching you up. I'm glad you're not dead, by the way. Um, we were uh, yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about, like, sort of what is going to come out of quarantine. And, like, I was, hope you know, sort of thinking about, hey, like, there'll, there'll be some really cool innovation, some good stuff that comes out of it. Um, you know, things will change, but uh, ideally, you know, a lot of it will be for good. Um, so that's kind of what we were... Well, that's kind of what we were getting at. Just so you, if there's anything, yeah. I, I don't know. It's I, I was just saying it's hard to it's hard to think that way when you're in the middle of. Um, at least it is for me. <laughs> so I don't know that it is for everybody, but it is for me. Yeah, I've had a hard time thinking more than like a week or two in, in advance. I think. Yeah. Planning beyond that is just uh, there's so many unknowns. Um, I do think there will be a lot of for the good change, and I do think there will be kind of a resurgence of kind of valuing uh, our like inter our time together interpersonally a lot more mm -hmm. than before. Mm -hmm. um, 
I kind of worry for like the event world, like, you know, be it like concerts or clubs or, you know, these shows where it was always a given that there'd be this many people packed together and that that's just kind of part of the appeal uh, because I think there's going to be a pretty slow up like you know return to that like if if at all you know yeah. there's, there's going to be a pretty big caution or suspicion around uh being all together in close proximity for quite some time it's gonna, so, it's gonna take years it's gonna take years yeah like conventions exactly like I, I, I conventions i know there's entire industries that are built around their once a year convention that is where they get 80 percent of their sales and all the interest you know, in their product and everything and marketing, all that, like it's the, it's the big deal of the year for that, their world. And for those to just go away out of nowhere, uh, is going to force everyone to change. And it has meant that a lot of people are looking digitally for a solution. It's just that there's not, it's not an easy fix. It's not a a one-to-one of like, Oh, let's just do it online because it doesn't really work that way. Yeah. So on one hand it's made, kind of folks like us who've been online for years, we have a lot more kind of context. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's still too early to really tell, but I, I do think, you know, regardless, there's gonna be limitless change really that comes from this. Absolutely, and I, I'm not, and you know, like this wasn't me trying to talk about anything depressing, it's just more of what we're all going through. Cause that's, mm-hmm. it's an interesting, it's so rare that everyone in the world is going through the same thing. Um, and obviously not everybody in the world is going through the same thing at exactly the same time because lots of countries have come out of quarantine and like, you know, there are a lot of countries that are doing better and stuff like that. But, but it's, I think we all have shared experience that way. So now, now we can all talk about it and we can all be like, how are we feeling? You know, uh, if some of us are still in it, if some of us are coming out of it, if, um, sort of relating to that person who was in it for, um, I've, I've seen a couple of like comments that was like, it was weird. I would say something on, on while streaming and uh, somebody in chat would go like, lol, imagine still being in quarantine. And I was like, damn, (laughs) like, damn, bro, that's cold. Like, it was one of those things where I was like, man, remember how you were feeling when you were there, you know, like, put yourself in my shoes because I'm still there. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, don't get me wrong, by the way, most people have been very, very positive and uplifting and and helpful. Uh, But it was just, it's something that I don't, it, it should allow us to empathize a lot more um, with a lot of people. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that's what that's what uh, it's allowing people to do. Yeah, I, Man, I, I do hope. think. Oh, are you going to give a, a different no, perspective? That's it. I, I think there's going to be one of the upsides that I, I personally believe is that when when there is this kind of a shared trauma, there's like a lot of empathy and and kind of mutual understanding and support that kind of comes out of it too yeah and in this case it's like everyone yeah (laughs) this isn't like a small subset of people that have undergone a trauma and and form like a support network like this is the entire world and so i mean the opposite reaction of this is like people you know scapegoating and, and pointing fingers at what causes this and and the kind of negative side of that but I, I kind of think that the majority of us that are more rational will, will see the positive side of it, which is like now when I see someone on the street and like we have like a brief moment of eye contact, we're like, yeah, that sucks. But, you know, yeah, hey, at least we're still here. And like, you know, the fact that ever, like society can bend, bend but not break, I think is is a really uh, encouraging thing. Yeah, too. It, so. it is. Yeah, I didn't, you know, you're right. That's a really good point. I never even thought of it that way that that. Uh, Because I did, I think at the beginning of this, I heard a few people be like, well, that's it for us. Like, (laughs) that's the end of civilization. And I was like, I I mean, I think, I feel like the roots are a little deeper than that. Um, Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, Craig, and that's what you say is is correct. It's, hey, we're, we can bend but not break. We're still good. Things are still going. People are still out there, you know, getting food and going to the beach and trying to, trying to live their lives and having kids and, you know, doing stuff. So, I don't know. It's a... Sorry, I didn't mean to make. The, I didn't mean to talk about this, but it's just 
it's on my mind. Well, it's on everyone's mind. It's on my mind yeah, all the time. Yeah. 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 So I think it's it's good to talk about it and not just keep it bottled up. Um, and this is kind of a safe place to talk about it, right? So yeah. glad we can. Don't don't apologize for like. I I think that's the other thing is is. There's there there are aspects of this that are obvious and big and and traumatizing. Like if you, if you lost work, that's big. And it's very obvious then where your pain is and and where your sympathies should be. But if if you're kind of on the softer side of it, it gets weird because you're. It's like the closest I think I've ever felt to survivor's guilt, where like, mm. you know, on Twitch I'm I'm doing okay. I'm I'm enjoying what I do, and uh, I just kind of by nature am a little introverted, so I don't have the. It start. It's really starting to hit now, but at at the beginning, you know, the first month, which is crazy to say you know to me it felt like same old thing um so uh for for me to not be deeply affected or for just even starting to understand the depth of effect that it's having on me is uh i don't know it i think it's affecting us all in very different ways and to like you shouldn't feel bad (laughs) about about sharing your feelings yeah because i think we're we're just in the process of understanding what this is doing to us and if we if we try to to suppress it, uh, it's only going to exacerbate its influence. Yeah. At least that's how I've always felt. If if I have feelings and I don't explore them, or I think that I'm not allowed to feel that way, which is a lot of how I feel these days, is that I'm not allowed to feel like I'm put out because there are other people suffering way worse than me. Mm-hmm. Then that's when it starts building up. When I ignore it, that's when all the cobwebs start to build up, and mm-hmm. and then the acting out starts get starts getting weird. So. Yeah, I uh, I try to do my best to both be honest with myself, and if I need to talk about stuff, to do it. But then also try to be as, as you know welcoming and, and enabling of other people if they need to get stuff off their chest too. Because we're all man, kind of like you said, Bruce. Who fucking knows what this is gonna do yeah. to us as individuals and us as as a group? Uh, you know, so I think it's important to talk about. Yeah, that's the the fallout's gonna be for years, and I uh, I guess my only my only advice the more that we talk about this even now. Is just uh, is just empathy for everybody. Like we're all, everybody's going through it. So like every, it's funny every, obviously I'm starved for talking to people. But every time I go anywhere to get food, whether or not it's a subway or a local business or whatever, I always ask them, "Hey, how, how's business? How how are things going?" And most of the time it's like a kind of a shrug, and it's like, "Hey, you know, it's okay. We're we're getting through it." And uh, and as time has gone on, it's gotten more and more, more and more positive, which is exciting. Like I, I'll now I go to the same local businesses, so I walk in and go, "Hey, how, how's, how are things?" And they're and they're like, "Hey, we're we're getting better, like we're doing good." Um, and I'm like, "Oh man, I'm glad to hear that." So like, it's just uh, it's important to to hear that from other people, and instead of being mm-hmm. like, you know, like, ah, well, you know what, here in Missouri, we're out of it, so fuck fuck off, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, dude. Be cool. Like, be like, yo, I remember when I was there and it sucked. Like, how are you doing? How are, how, how are things? Um, try to, try to have some empathy for your, uh, your fellow humans. Cause they're all, they're all going through different, you know, varying degrees of, of difficult, I think. But yeah. And difficulty looks different to different people. It does. Yeah. Um, everyone's, everyone's going to cope in a different way and some people are not going to be able to cope in, who even knows? I, t- I'm always reminded of like, there's always this weird dynamic at, at like a funeral where people attack each other for not grieving properly. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, f- I feel like I've seen that happen quite a bit. Um, and I feel like it's only going to get more intense as time goes by, which is unfortunate. So as, as much as you should be mindful, well, I shouldn't lecture, I guess. Uh, for me, as much as I should be mindful of how I'm dealing with things. I should also be mindful that the way that I'm dealing with things are not the way that other people deal with things. And if I see behavior, to remind myself that, hey, everyone's going through a hard time and trying to uh, trying to be very tolerant and understanding. Um, it, it can be tough if, if somebody's, somebody's throwing fire out into the world to respond to being like, hey, hey is everything cool? Uh, it, it can be tempting to fire back. And especially on the Internet, man, that's that's just like the culture. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of used to things getting like that's almost part of the sport of it is that somebody throws some heat at you and you just fire back. Um, but I'm trying to trying to train myself out of that these days uh, because man, who knows what that other person's going through mm-hmm. or what made them type that out or you know they might just have some they might just have some shit going on. Um, Craig, do you have any final words before we leave the leave the podcast? 
Um, wow. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to. I was just asking. Let's end it on a positive note. Uh, the Rager, when this is done, is going to be epic. Oh, my gosh. Oh my God. I can't fucking Can wait. Can you imagine? I can't fucking wait. I, it's going to be... Uh, uh, I, I already said epic. I, I don't think I can one up anything past epic. Can I start? Maybe I should start a music festival called like post COVID, and mm-hmm. and all it will be is people having the dirtiest, most close up sex. <laughs> it's not a music festival. Then it's an orgy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what music festivals you're, are. Everybody knows you're that. Talking okay. about and there's just music in the background. Yeah, that's, everybody knows. Everybody's getting blowjobs on the dance floor. Come on, you know that. You're aware. <laughs> you're aware of what's happening. Um, so uh, He's right. I'm going to call it post COVID and Craig and you're not invited. Oh yeah. Sorry, man. Kind of mean, but okay. I, uh, <laughs> guess at Crycon we'll have our own post COVID party during COVID. During we'll COVID, say it's, yeah. the, we're, it's the cancel COVID party and we'll say now it's over and it'll be totally premature and it'll be a big media disaster, but, uh, you're all invited. And then everyone will get pink eye or some other bullshit. <laughs> yeah. But at least it's not COVID. It's not COVID. Yeah. <laughs> That's... yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, a, I'm excited for like, yeah, when, when, when there's like the all clear, the stamp comes down and it's bars are open. It's going to like, I'm going to want to go get fucked up, but I feel like I want to stay at least semi-coherent so I can see other people just stumbling around, <laughs> like barfing in the corner, peeing their own, peeing themselves. Oh, yeah. You know, I can't wait. And that's, yeah, everyone's going to lose their minds, and I want to make sure I'm there for it. I think the way it's going to play out, too, is it's not going to be like a one day thing where all of a sudden everybody's out because yeah. that's not the way this is playing out. But it's just going to be months of that where, like, it's just going to be that dude's time where all of a sudden they're letting loose, and then you're going to see. So you're going to get to see that for months in bars, and I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. So, um, anyways, okay. All right. That's the end of the podcast. We should say goodbye to YouTube. So. We didn't enter the podcast, Bruce. Oh, shit. Uh, welcome oh, to shit. Talk to the Internet number 30. Is it 30 or 30? It is. Yeah, 30, 30. 30. That was number 30? Oh, it's, oh. it's our 30th anniversary or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, wow, anyways, the big 3 Yeah. Say uh, say goodbye to Dirty 30. Um, <laughs> all right. Bye, Dirty 30. <laughs> Bye, YouTube.